In this tutorial, I want to show you some of the improvements I made in extension pack 5R4 to the Mari decal workflow. So here I have a fairly basic setup, just a plane with some asphalt on it, and I want to detail this up a little bit. Let's first go out to our shelves and go to the MEP material presets folder. In here you will find all the material presets that ship with extension pack. Material presets are basically blank materials that, as you can see here on the right side, have some attributes pre-exposed so you can easily start editing them. Some of the new presets in extension pack 5 are 4 are the decal workflow presets. Here you can see it's one of them, so they're marked with this cube icon. You can see each shader model comes with a separate decal workflow. I'm going to choose the Arnold reduced version, which is just a smaller version of the main Arnold shader because I don't need as many attributes as the Arnold shader offers me. So I'm going to stick with the reduced version. Let's drag this in here. And by default, these presets are empty, so nothing will change. So we need to actually add some materials to it. So let's go to our image manager where I already loaded in a sequence of textures that make up like this gutter material. I'm gonna make sure that my decal material is selected and then just use the ingest into current layer feature and then just click OK. And you might be wondering, okay, there's still nothing happening. That is because the orientation of the projection is at the moment not from the top down. So how do I actually edit this orientation? So if we go to the projector settings, you can see here we have several projector orientation settings. I could just go in here, and for example, make a change here, but that's very tedious. I don't want to edit all these numbers. I want to interactively edit this. So all I need to do now with extension pack 5R4 is click on the transform selected object tool and I'll get a locator. And now I can freely move this stuff around. I can scale this. So if you hold control and shift, you can scale things down then place them the way I need them. Let's scale this up a little bit more. So it's a bit more in sync with the scale of the rest of the street. And if I'm done, I'm just clicking back on the object. And I have my layer stack again. So now in the reduced decal, I can make some adjustments, such as just adjust the brightness, saturation, etc. You can make changes to the alpha and bump. So for example, if I go to the normal map, I can tweak that here. And obviously I want it on the other side as well. So I'm just gonna Right mouse click, or actually not even that. I'm just gonna click on the duplicate layers button. And let's go back to our transform tool and then just move it over here. Now I can go ahead and make other changes to this. I just drag another decal material in here. And let's load something else in. So I'm gonna go to my texture sets palette. And then, for example, just load in this manhole cover. Let's see if I can find another one. Let's pick this one instead. Right mouse click, add to image manager. Again, make sure it's selected. Select all of this, right mouse click, ingest into current layer. Click OK again. And let's go straight in, in here. And let's rotate this 45 degrees. There we are. Sorry, 90 degrees, I mean. With control, you can kind of step it in different angles so we can make it snap nicely and just scale it down. And you can see it's repeating at the moment along one of the axes. So let me first place this somewhere. Let's go back to our layer stack and in the projector mode, we can limit this to clip both. So now we only have it in one section. And that is already the majority of the decal workflow actually. So you have, if we just take a quick look at the images again. So here you can see all the images and at the bottom we have a mask slot, which is how the transparency of the decals is determined. Um, for those interested, how this projector workflow works. So whenever you have a node selected, it doesn't have to be a template. It can be any node. 
any node that has these so-called locator lists exposed, so where you can assign a locator. What my extension pack does is whenever you have something like that selected and you click on the transform selected object icon, Mari will create a temporary locator for you. So if I go to the object list, you can see I have this temporary locator here. And if I click off the object, you can see the temporary locator disappears again. So this is what extension pack is doing now in 504 to make this workflow a little bit easier. One other thing I want to quickly point out in this tutorial is that you can actually limit what you see or which shader models you like to use. So at the moment you can see the material presets list kind of all shader models that are available. You can actually configure this via the Mari preferences. So now there's a new tab called material templates and here you can remove shader models that you don't want to see. So for example, if I only use V-Ray and Arnold, I can only limit that to V-Ray and Arnold. The display of the material templates will also affect, for example, the display inside of the main Mari material ingester. So you will not have the presets inside of the material ingester. So if I go in here, you can see now I only see Arnold and V-Ray here as well. If you're working in a pipeline and you want to define this for your entire team, you can do this by defining environment variables. And if you're interested in that, I would recommend you take a look inside of the online help in the environment variable section. That wraps this tutorial and I hope it's useful. Thank you very much.